So I come to know that our Father in Heaven is not a God of coincidence. So it's no coincidence that this year's Resurrection Sunday falls on the last day of Women's History Month. So quickly go with me to scripture. I'm going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, beginning at verse 18. And it's given to verses 21 and 22. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. Up to this point, everything God created was good. Until man was alone. And God said, it is not good. And he made a helper, a woman. Now when I saw the word helper, I saw it out just a little bit. <laughs> but I was led to dig deeper. And when I looked up the Hebrew definition of helper, it means an ally or a rescuer. And so woman was intentionally created with a specific purpose. Now I wanted to know the women that God used in the Bible. And he used many, but for time's sake, I'm just going to name a few. There was Sarah. Sarah was the wife to Abraham, and Abraham was the one that God gave the promise to that he would be a father to a great nation. To be a father to a great nation, you must have a child. And considering that Abraham couldn't give birth to a child, he needed, emphasis on needed his wife. Now Sarah was barren, and she couldn't have children. But God being the promise keeper that he is, Sarah gave birth to a son named Isaac at 90 years old. And then there was Hannah. Hannah was also barren. She could not have children. The Bible says she cried bitterly as she prayed to the Lord for a son and vowed that she would give that son back to God for his entire lifetime. God heard her prayers and she gave birth to a son named Samuel. Samuel was a great prophet. He's so great, he has not one, but two books in the Bible, 1st and 2nd Samuel. And he was the prophet that God used to anoint David as king. And there was Elizabeth. Elizabeth, too, was barren, could not have children. But like Luke 137 says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And Elizabeth gave birth to a son named John. John would become known as John the Baptist, who would baptize our Savior, Jesus. So it's evident, God uses a woman when he wants to do something revolutionary in this earth. And revolutionary means a complete or dramatic change. Now what better revolutionary thing could God do than to have the Holy Spirit come upon a young girl named Mary who would give birth to a child that would be the Son of God and the Son of Man. That child's name is Jesus. Jesus was perfect without sin, yet he took on all of humanity's iniquities, died a crucified death, and rose again so that we, you and I could be reconciled to our Father. And so a woman was created with a purpose. You were created with a purpose. Your age, your height, your weight, your race doesn't matter. Your past sins, your failures do not matter. God will use you. It is never too late. So if you want to know your purpose, sit with God in his word, and I can assure you, he will tell you your purpose. Now before I go, we want to take the time to honor a City of David woman. This woman is fantastic. You know that God exists because his strength shines through her. She carries herself with grace and class. Her witness will inspire you to walk with Jesus. And she exemplifies the fruit of the spirit. As Dr. Maya Angelou would say, she is a phenomenal woman. So if you can, please stand to help me honor and praise God for the beautiful, the intelligent, the kind-hearted, and I can go on and on, one of my favorite people in this world, Dr. Karen. <laughs>
crybaby. <laughs> and I am still grieving, so like every moment I just give God credit. 